Most of you have heard of the Startup Nation. Israel is known for its entrepreneurial spirit and blooming tech industry. But what is less known are many of the challenges facing this successful ecosystem. How many female entrepreneurs are there? Is there a shortage of qualified human capital? What will the future labor market look like with regards to the tech industry? Here to answer these questions is the CEO of the Institute of Innovation Technology in Israel, Ido Goldman. Welcome. Thank you. So before we jump in, can you tell us a little bit about INT? Okay, INT is training both the business and the private sector for 18 years in Israel. We are training in all the range of the ITEC uh, um, courses and uh, occupations. Mm -hmm. We are training both the business sectors, the employees, to um, um, upskilling their abilities. And the private sector, we are given a full-time training to teach them from scratch mm -hmm. all the occupation. So you're essentially training current employees, but also future high-tech entrepreneurs? Yeah. Okay, great. We are pretty much the gateway to people that want to work in the high tech industry, mm -hmm. starting usually with, with us. So first they start with you, and then they go on to study at universities, or vice versa? How does well, that work? Well, not always. Sometimes um, they come in after they have their first degree, mm -hmm. and uh, they want to make a change or to make an upskill and to then to go into the IT industry. And today it's more common that people uh, come in with no degree and they're uh, starting right after the course, usually it's around one year, one and a half uh, years, um, they're starting to work in the IT industry with no uh, need to a first or second degree. And what kind of course is it? I mean, what do you teach there? Well, we teach from uh, programming, from all the different kind of languages of programming, uh, cybersecurity, QA engineers, um, pretty much it's the, the occupations is changing rapidly mm -hmm. because the, te the tech is changing very, very fast. Mm -hmm. So we are changing almost on yearly basis the kind of courses and the occupation that we are training for. Mm -hmm. And I understand we talked before, you said that you're also exporting this knowledge abroad. Yeah, well, INT today is part of groups called GAS, Global University Systems which is the biggest education group in Europe, uh, training for uh, different things, universities of, uh, of, of business, of uh, languages, of uh, law, and INT um, is part of the group for uh, the tech training, and today we are starting to deliver all the training that we are doing in Israel to different places in the world. For, for example, we are just starting now a few courses, most of on cyber in Toronto. Mm -hmm. We're starting in Ireland, England, and during there we're going to open a different, different uh, kind of, of place. Mm -hmm. INT in Israel is going to be the R&D center for all the knowledge, the high-tech knowledge, which Israel is very mm -hmm. well known for. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you mentioned um, sort of evolving trends in the Israeli ecosystem, that it's fast-paced, it's fast-changing. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the main challenges that we're seeing in terms of the Israeli startup ecosystem or the high-tech industry? Well, it's pretty much the same in Israel and the same in the world. The, there is few forces that work in and changing, um, changing all the, uh, all the high-tech uh, industry in, in terms of, of employees, mm -hmm. of employment. Well, there is today in Israel, for example, there is a big gap in the numbers of employees needed and the number that adding each year. A shortage the, of human capital. Yeah. Okay. Still, and the biggest challenge, as you asked, the biggest challenge uh, that we're meeting today are pretty much coming from the same source or making one another. Um, first challenge is to to because the tech is changing rapidly. So to try and know and uh, predict what are going to be the main occupation needed in two, three, four years. And if, if we don't know how to recognize it, it's hard for us to make the right employees for it. Mm -hmm. So in two years, if we didn't predict right the occupation that's going to be most popular, most needed, mm -hmm. so we again going to have a gap of employees. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much connected one to another. So you mentioned that there is a shortage of human capital, but we know that there's a, lo a lot of sectors in Israeli society that haven't been tapped into. For example, women, ultra-Orthodox, Israeli Arabs. Can you tell us, do you know some of these statistics off the top of your head? 
Yeah, and it's pretty well known that uh, women today, as, as much as, for example, we are trying to push uh, women into the high-tech industry, mm -hmm. um, there's still only 30% of all employees in the high-tech industry, although everybody, I think, we can agree that the abilities of the women is for, for the least the same like, like the guys, mm -hmm. um, but still I think it's like um, some, some sort of, of barrier that it's not really existing in, uh, it's only existing in our head. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's something that we need to, to break in the society and it goes the same to uh, the Arabs, as we say, and the Orthodox. Um, it's coming from, from different places, but eventually we can see that if people not thinking in the beginning when they're a child and they're growing up, that they are going to be fit, that they are going to be able to fit into the industry, so they're not going to fit. Mm -hmm. And we can see that the, the Orthodox, for example, um, is less than 1% in the high-tech industry. Less than 1% of all Orthodox are in the high-tech industry. The Arabic, for example, it's less than 1.5%. Most of them are men. Mm -hmm. Like 90% of this percentage is uh, it's men. So it's really, really low. And when we have a big gap of employees, so there are a few uh, sectors that we are missing mm -hmm. today. Okay. And I'll ask just one final question since we're almost out of time, but what does the future labor market look like in Israel with regards to the tech industry? Well, I, I think that something that we, we just talked about, um, today the companies is uh, recruiting less and less focusing on degrees, less demand on degrees. And today the generation, it's also, it's, it's a different gener generation. Mm -hmm. The stability is lower and they're uh, fast learning, and they want different, different things from themselves. And the training is have to be matching to uh, the development of the industry. And the, the industry is developing in a very, very high pace. So I think that the training have to be the same. Well, Ido Goldman, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you.